Welcome to the weekly wrap up. I'm Elaine Stenson, and today we are speaking to Johan Ditzlemt, who is managing director of NSFX. Hello, Johan. You are very welcome to the weekly wrap up. So, first of all, volatility increased this week as traders digested mixed news from major economies. What were the major events that caused this? Hi, Elaine. Um, well, there's no doubt that uh, the biggest surprise to the markets this week was the uh, release of the uh, Bank of Japan decision, which triggered off massive risk aversion in the Japanese markets, where we saw the Nikkei making a roller coaster, roller coaster ride and the, uh, the yen looking to be taking home gains against the U.S. dollar for the fourth week in a row. Um, in the U.S., uh, we saw the May retail sales uh, as the main event, uh, and they, they came out uh, stronger than expected. Also, the, uh, the falling uh, initial uh, jobless claims uh, makes it even more difficult um, an even more difficult bet to assess the relation to quantitative easing from the Federal Reserve. Uh, the recent market reaction has been that uh, better than expected figures would re reduce the, the quantitative easing bets and uh, hence trigger risk aversion, but this has not been the case this week. Also, the uh, preliminary June uh, consumer confidence figures from the University of Michigan will be interesting, and uh, we will be uh, surprised if the index uh, manages to extend it gain, its gains. Uh, looking into the uh, Eurozone, uh, we saw another round of worrying growth figures um, from Italy, and we've seen yields also picking up uh, as signs of worry. But no real reaction has been seen in the euro, where we've actually seen uh, euro dollar extending uh, its gains from, from last week, where it, uh, it closed above the 100-week uh, moving average. Johan, you mentioned Japan there, and one of the most important releases for the week was Tuesday's Bank of Japan meeting. Most analysts expected that policy board to extend the duration of its fixed-rate fund supplying program. However, the absence of policy adjustments signaled that the board is not concerned enough yet about recent market developments to take action. So how did this affect the Japanese yen and the markets? Um, yeah, you're right. I mean, even though we're seeing some positive signs of the interventions carried out by the Bank of Japan, uh, this week's announcement uh, sent the yen on the bid across the board, and particularly on the technical side in dollar yen, things are looking quite bearish. Uh, we saw earlier this week that the pair closed below the, uh, the daily Ichimoku cloud for the first time since October last year, and this suggests that more downside is to come, especially now that the market is start starting to worry that the uh, avionomics uh, will prove not to have the desired effect. Um, should we not see a, a short-term reversal in the pair, we could see a move down to the 200-day moving average, uh, which is around 90 currently. Elsewhere in Australia, there was a better than expected unemployment rate, which at 5.5% versus the 5.6% that was expected. How did this affect the Aussie dollar? Um, so far this year, the Aussie has been on a, under significant pressure following an easing demand for, for Australian goods uh, and a struggling economy, which has sent the Aussie dollar to uh, the lowest level since 2011. Uh, this week's figures are not showing anything new, as the change in the real figures are, are quite small, actually. Uh, still, compared to a year ago, the unemployment rate was at 5.2%, so overall we are still seeing an in increase in, uh, in uh, unemployment. Um, Aussie dollar is still in a, in a clear downtrend and we need to see a close uh, above the 99 figure to change the scenario. And staying with unemployment, while the British rate has remained as expected at 7.8%, how has this affected the pound sterling? Um, well, uh, against the euro, the, the sterling has not really moved that much and is currently uh, it, it's, it's lacking direction, uh, currently flirting with the 200-day uh, moving average. Uh, against the dollar, however, uh, we've seen a decent rally this week. Um, actually, we're seeing uh, cable advance uh, against, well, cable advancing for the, for the third week in a row. And uh, we have tested the 50-week the uh, moving average where we haven't seen uh, a close above since January 2013. Um, if, we, if we manage to close above, uh, we would definitely set um, our eyes for a test of the 158 figure. And finally, looking to next week, what major events will you be looking out for? Uh, next week, uh, the, uh, the U.S. will definitely be in focus. Uh, the key event will no doubt uh, be uh, the FOMC on Wednesday, and the market will be on the lookout for any hints directed towards additional quantitative easing. Uh, matter of fact is that uh, even though the Fed has posted trillions into the economy, the payout has not yet uh, been seen in, in terms of real growth. But for sure, I mean, the cost of capital rem will remain low, and the risk-taking could be extended should we see any additional uh, stimulus being injected into the economy. 
in addition, in addition, we have some key figures for inflation, manufacturing, and housing. So we could see an, ad- an additional pickup in, in volatility should the figures uh, surprise the market. Great, Johan, thank you for that and thank you for joining us today. And that's our weekly wrap-up for now. Do join us again next Friday. Bye for now. Thank you.